Uh, first off, if uh, you haven't been told this, welcome. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for waiting to the last presentation. Uh, I'm Spencer Jackson. Um, this is the evaluation of a health coaching program in a rural clinical setting. Uh, this is AJ Ajmer, Gregory Holder, Ashley Camella, and Sarah Lisson. Our research mentor is Dr. Tara Gallion. She is in the back over there. Sorry, I'll get it. <laughs> My bad. Uh, if you want to switch lines. Okay, so we had three community partners, um, Vident Family Medicine in Washington, uh, consisted of four clinicians, two medical doctors, <laughs> one nurse practitioner, and one physician assistant. Uh, they really focused on improving the quality of health by removing disease, and they really wanted to emphasize individuals and families in the community of Washington and Beaufort County. Our second community partner is Eastern Area Health Education Center, or Eastern AHEC. They are one of nine Eastern, one of nine area health education centers, um, and they also have a similar mission as uh, Vident Family Medicine in Washington, which is really good for community partners. All of these had similar missions, which was very good for um, working with us when we wanted to focus on health coaching. Um, and our last community partner was the Beaufort County Health Department. Uh, it's a state government agency, which was also focused on improving quality of life by trying to remove um, or trying to prevent communicable and chronic diseases. Uh, some background information. Uh, the research that we performed uh, took place in Beaufort County, North Carolina. Uh, specifically, the uh, interviews that we uh, performed were in Washington, North Carolina. Uh, we focused on patient-centered care, uh, which was the patient-centered medical home standard. Uh, there are nine standards for this. We focused on standard number four, uh, patient self-management and support. Uh, this was basically trying to improve the relationship between the physician and the patient. So the leading causes of death in Beaufort County are heart disease, uh, cancer, and chronic uh, lower respiratory diseases. And um, the risk factors that contribute to these are physical inactivity, uh, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and tobacco use. And the AHEC um, community partner chose to focus on two health, be health behaviors that included nutrition and physical activity. All right, with the research question, I'm just going to read it straight off the slide here because it's really important. Uh, what were the community partners, health coaches, and program participants' perceptions of and experiences with health coaching as an intervention to help program participants modify unhealthy lifestyle behaviors, specifically diet and physical activity behavior, to lose weight, in this case, decrease BMI? Now, there's several uh, parts of this that are very important to the research that we did. First of all, notice it's community partners, health coaches, and program participants. We have both the people that implemented it, people that did it, and the people that received it. So we're looking at three different levels of uh, our evaluation. Um, we're looking for perceptions of and experiences with, which means we're doing both a process evaluation and an outcomes evaluation of this program. Um, the perceptions of were more of a, uh, a reflective piece for them. They were looking and said, this is what we felt uh, as we did it. The experiences with were mainly the processes that they went through to do uh, this program. Um, the uh, health coaching as an intervention, intervention normally means we're attempting to make a change for somebody. In this case, though, I want you to notice that it's to help program participants modify in healthy lifestyles. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and move to the next slide there. What is health coaching? Health coaching is a methodology and a process by which, uh, instead of a didactic style of, of teaching somebody how to do something, you let them set their own goals. Uh, it's going to um, it's small steps. The, the participant was able to go, well, I think this, uh, this month I want to cut out some salt out of my diet. Okay, so what do you think some good ways of doing that are? So health coaching this point, uh, in this uh, program is almost like cheerleading. It's, okay, these are good goals. How do we help you meet those goals? And by them setting their own goals, they're more likely to uh, um, uh, follow through with them and have good self-efficacy with them and, and feel like they can reach those goals. In our literature review, we looked at several studies focusing on health coaching both in a clinical setting and also in a rural setting. And we found that in a rural setting, many studies reported that instead of doing clinical setting with patients going to a health department or a clinic, that instead they used telephone or at-home health coaching. And that tended to be easier for the patients because often in these rural populations, um, 
generally the demographic was a little bit older, so it was tougher for people to travel. And also sometimes people had trouble um, with access to transportation. They just simply couldn't travel to a clinic or a health department. And we found that the face-to-face -face coaching sometimes was a little bit more effective than the at-home or the telephone coaching because it was easier for participants to form relationships with their physicians. But generally it was well accepted by the patients and positive results were seen in studies using health coaching for a variety of different diseases such as heart disease, hypertension, and diabetes. And in our case, we were focusing on using telephone coaching for obesity. Okay, so our methodology included mixed methods of qualitative and quantitative data. Our qualitative data, um, we had face-to-face -face interviews with participants, health coaches, and community partners. They were in-depth, and we wanted to address like motivation, confidence, and satisfaction with the overall program from different perspectives. Uh, we also had quantitative data, which uh, utilized population demographics from Beaufort County, um, BMI, weight, uh, and the total number of health coaching phone calls and uh, lessons that they received, which was mostly one for the participants across the board. Also, methodology um, was changed because of the community partners. Um, this is community-based research, and we thought it was very important to base our research off of the community partners' needs and wants and the community's needs and wants. Um, our initial methodology had different um, different goals, but through the community partners and the health coaches, we were able to change our methodology to be more approachable and more um, impactful to the community itself. All right, let's just talk about the preliminary results. Uh, the first thing is we, uh, uh, the initial uh, goal was this. We had a list of the program participants. We wanted to pick 20 of them. And then if somebody said no, we were going to uh, uh, repick more people until we got to the number of 20. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, we had seven. Um, so we did have a very small population in terms of, of our uh, surveys, which means that uh, it's susceptible to a couple kinds of bias. First would be recall bias. We had several people um, that did the fall uh, uh, program. There was a fall and a spring. They did the fall program, so they didn't remember a lot of the stuff. They were going on to sort of uh, memories of it. It's also um, very susceptible to response bias. The people that were more likely to uh, respond to the invitation to come to a health department and uh, be interviewed are generally people that either really liked the program or really did not like the program. So they had quote unquote an agenda to their thing. So we're having to uh, examine that. If we had a bigger population, those kind of biases would uh, go away. The things that really came out of it, uh, everybody, both health coaches, the uh, community partners and the participants all felt like it was just sort of thrown together at the beginning and there was not a lot of training. Particularly one of the health coaches um, who graduated from East Carolina as a health educator did not really know anything about health coaching and the difference between the two. Um, and she said, once we got going with it, I got to go to some of these conferences, I ch it completely changed the way that I was approaching my job. Um, and it was very, very helpful for her. Um, and there was a, a, a discrepancy between what the coaches and the partners felt about the program. Generally, they were thinking it was very positive and, and very, uh, as uh, was said, very impactful. And some of the participants did not feel that way. They felt like it was uh, not as, as, as uh, good as they were hoping. Um, some of them felt like they wanted more phone calls. Some of them felt they wanted more classes. Um, generally, the participants had good recommendations of how to improve the program, whereas the, uh, the coaches were, you know, everything's going great. Um, so there was a, an obvious discrepancy between the two of the uh, participants and the coaches. So the gains of um, the program evaluating the process, the process evaluation would help to make the ongoing program more effective in teaching nutrition and physical activity skills to the participants. And as a result, this could help the program receive funding to continue and expand the program to different areas in the county? We hope that there are going to be two main gains for the coaches in the program. The first being more comprehensive training. Um, a lot of the coaches reported that they had either little or no training before they actually started making calls and doing the health coaching. And the other gain would be more coaches, um, recruiting and training more coaches to grow the program. And one possibility we've discussed for doing this is training ECU students to go be health coaches in the form of a service learning class. Um, the other gain that 
the coaches have also gotten out of this sort of a secondary gain, as Greg mentioned, is a new outlook and a new approach towards health coaching versus conventional health education, um, less teaching and more empowering and building relationships with the patients. For the community, um, we decided that it, this would increase the self-efficacy of the community itself. Um, this would help by managing um, their health through self-management, self-care, um, with an increased knowledge of proper nutrition and physical activity. And as a result, this would ultimately lead to improved health in the community. And all of us as students, first and foremost, have of course gained hands-on qualitative research experience. And through this, one of the particular skills that we gained that was specific to our project was qualitative interview techniques in going down to Beaufort County and conducting these interviews with the patients. And we've all learned a lot about teamwork and how we each operate within the team and the importance of certain skills um, in a research team, such as coordination and scheduling with five of us, that was a little bit difficult, <laughs> and effective communication and time management when doing our project. So what's next for our research project? As, as Greg had mentioned earlier, there was only a, we had a relatively small sample size, uh, only seven participants and a few health coaches and community partners. So we had the idea of doing focus groups. Uh, we felt that, you know, if we revised the IRB and, and decided to do focus groups, the community, the participants could open up more. They felt more comfortable being in a, in a group instead of a one-on-one -on -one environment, which can sometimes, across the table interviews, can feel a little bit intimidating, where they felt like they, as a group, they could open up more. Uh, at the same time, we, uh, because our IRB was only approved a couple of weeks ago, uh, we are still in the process of analyzing the interview transcripts from the interviews. Uh, and through that, we will take and discover the strengths and weaknesses of the program and create a report in which we will take and disseminate to the partners, uh, which will show the strengths and weaknesses to help improve the program. The ultimate goal, of course, uh, is to, con is to uh, construct a manuscript. Uh, but in this case, we saw that a necessity for two manuscripts may be necessary. One, of course, is the evaluation of the health coaching program. Uh, but the second, uh, as, as, as mentioned, you know, for, for many of these groups was there was a difficulty, you know, with schedules and everything like that. But we also found it interesting working with different, uh, and, diver different and diverse uh, individuals, be it uh, ourselves uh, as undergraduate students, uh, graduate students, uh, community partners, professors, physicians. Uh, and we decided that, you know, we could do a pedagogical case study, which would also be a, a very interesting uh, case study and manuscript. Uh, we would also uh, like to extend several acknowledgments, uh, Dr. Kendall Shores and Dr. Beth Theldy, uh, for their continued support uh, and uh, advising on the uh, project. Uh, I'd also like to thank Dr. Tara Lee Gallion uh, for her continued forgiveness on my pronunciation of her name and the southern spin that I would always tend to put on it. Uh, AJ? We'd also like to thank our community partners, the Beaufort County Health Department, Eastern AHEC, and Biden Family Medicine in Washington. We'd also like to thank Dr. O'Connor and Dr. Fraley for all of their unwavering support. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> yes. Um, so in the health coaching program, phone calls were being made uh, to recruit people for the program. However, a lot of the health coaches and community partners felt that it was necessary to go back to snail mail, like mail individual letters, uh, inform people via non-electronic resources, because a lot of the people would get a call and hang up immediately. And that was a big problem for us, because we weren't able to interview them if they weren't able to contact us. So we, we changed that, uh, we're planning on changing that to have it more letter style, send out a letter in the mail and hard copy and just pass it out so it's more informative and you have it in your hand. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, I, I would have a comment. The uh, idea for the second manuscript is a really interesting one. Yes, ma'am.
criteria are that you must learn about, with, and from people from different disciplines, professions, etc. And it seems to me that was a theme in yours and, and other groups today, mm -hmm. the comment that I understood lab-based research or I'm a quantitative scientist, and here I am learning about a different kind from a different person and a different discipline. I think um, the other piece that ties into that is the idea of transformational learning mm -hmm. and how these kinds of experiences um, can transform any learner in terms of their viewpoint on the world, how they see the world because of their experiences of learning about where they're from. So I'd encourage you to think about that as a second type of learning experience. Any other questions, comments? Thank, Thank you. you.